project called RAINX, which we held in 2005 and observed uh, hurricanes Ophelia, Katrina, and Rita. And I'm going to be talking in this talk entirely about the convective structures that are in these uh, tropical cyclones. I'm very interested in the clouds in tropical cyclones uh, as uh, in so far as how they're distinguished from clouds and other types of phenomena. So some of my motivation comes from a slightly different direction. This is uh, Hurricane Rita. These are, you can see some outer rain bands here. I was standing on the balcony of an apartment in Miami watching this little squall line come through on the outer edge of the storm. That's a very outer, uh, outermost uh, feature of the storm. This is an, a schematic that was, it's, it's based on Hugh Willoughby and Frank Marks and others in the past and then we've been continually tweaking it and changing it a little. These outer rain bands like the one I just showed are very convective features. They, they don't really have much, uh, that much to do in their structure with the, uh, with the hurricane vortex itself. Once you get inside something like this dotted line here, then the clouds become very affected by the, by the vortex dynamics. And then there's, uh, you know, you saw those old timey things yesterday where Rick and some of them were saying, oh, there's the spiral rain bands, or there's the hot towers. You know, the very vague uh, descriptions of what's in here. We've been trying to get much more precise about this. Hugh Willoughby and Frank pointed out that one of the uh, features in the interior region is so-called principal rain band, which is bigger than the other rain bands. It's spiral, not circular, and it uh, tends to be out toward the boundary uh, between where the vortex is important and where you get in the outer environment. Smaller and it doesn't propagate very much. It's somewhat stationary relative to, this, to the rest of the storm. The secondary rain bands are smaller. They propagate radially and azimuthally and are probably associated with vortex Rossby waves. The eye walls can, can be one or two, depending on whether an eye wall replacement is happening. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to be discussing the eye wall clouds in a secondary eye wall situation a principal rain band, and I'm also going to, but I'm going to start with, with Ophelia, which is a storm in which we uh, caught it right at the genesis phase, so we see what the convection looks like during, during the genesis. So what I'm going to, about to do is give you a highlight reel of Rain-X. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the highlights of, of the results that we've gotten. Uh, Katrina will be, gave us a very good look at a principal rain band, Rita at a double eye wall and the moat in between the two. So Ophelia, we'll start with, we observed this storm. Here's the time of the flight right here. It was just off the Florida coast. This shows you that we caught it right before it really uh, developed into a hurricane. It was, it was just a depression at this stage, but, it, but then after that, the next days, it, it rapidly, the pressure decreased, the winds increased, it became a hurricane. So we caught it right at that stage where it was uh, about to go into trop tropical cyclone structure. Uh, this is a set of radar pictures from the Melbourne radar in the Florida coast. These are satellite pictures that go with it. Um, the the um, the flight, oh boy, uh, yeah, the, the flight, uh, the, the flight that we uh, had was, was at this time here. And what you see is kind of a mishmash on the radar of, of convector scale and mesoscale structures. These three features here, you know, I would call mesoscale systems. We, mesoscale convective systems, they have both stratiform and convective precip venom that there's scattered intense cells around too. Just, and this pattern was evolving for many, many hours, even days actually. Uh, and then finally, one of these uh, mesoscale systems developed into the uh, into a cyclone structure. Well, I'm going to talk about it while it's in this stage here where, where we saw it with the, uh, with the aircraft. This is the flight. We basically just flew around that feature. Can't tell so much from this radar image, but this is mostly stratiform in here, and this was a very intense convective cell, so we got next to it, flew back and forth a few times. And I should have said at the beginning of my introductory comments that that these, the data that we collected in RAINX are, are uh, sort of along the lines of the, of the tail radar data that Frank talked about on the NOAA aircraft, but these were obtained with the so-called Eldor radar, which is similar. It's on a NOAA, it's mounted on a, on a Navy P3. It's an NCAR facility. 
works like the, the NOAA tail radars, but, it, but it's able to get a higher resolution observation. So we were on an NSF funded project to really try to see the more detailed internal structures of these, of these features. And so all of the data that I talk about here are obtained with this uh, Eldora radar, which is, an, as I say, an NCAR facility. Um, this is uh, the ed front edge of that feature I just mentioned, and, the, and the, what I'm showing down below is a cross-section along this, along this red line. Actually, I think it's along the white line inside the red line. And the thing to note here is how wide and tall this thing is. It gets up to 14, 15 kilometers with very, very strong vertical velocities. These are the arrows here. These vertical velocities are over 10 meters per second over a good 10, 12, 15 kilometer width here. So it's a very wide, very deep convective cell. Um, uh, it's being fed from this side here. And you know, other notice also there's very little downdraft structure here. So these are, these are features that make this convective uh, entity very different uh, than most of the convection we observe outside of the tropical cyclone environment and even you know, both the tropics and mid-latitudes. This is a sort of an unusual form of convection, but we have reason to think that it has been seen in other, um, other genesis uh, situations, uh, both before and after this. But this is a, an unusually good observation of it. Uh, it also, uh, the data were good enough to do a so-called thermodynamic retrieval where you work the equations backwards and figure out what the pressure perturbation and and um, temperature perturbations were, you can see a five degree buoyancy here and half a millibar uh, low pressure anomaly here in the middle, middle of the cell, all, all making good sense. The, the bottom half of the picture shows the, the vertical mass transport, rho times w, to maximum up in here, so you can imagine there's a lot of stretching of vorticity going on here. Uh, or generation of PV, however you want to think about it. Um, uh, these uh, contours are actually contours of the converge, uh, convergence of, the, uh, of that uh, vertical mass transport where the PV generation would be uh, maximum. The next figure is going to be a, a horizontal cross-section at this eight kilometer level across this feature. And the colors here show um, vorticity. The red is positive, blue is negative. Uh, I don't have vertical velocity on here, but you do see uh, the uh, pressure perturbation. There's the low center here. Here's the uh, temperature perturbation, so the updraft's right about in and here. And you can see there's a, this involves a vortex couplet, as you might expect from a strong updraft like that. It's biased toward the positives being more dominant than the negatives because this updraft is also bringing positive vorticity, you know, a sort of environmental positive vorticity up. Oh boy, things are going faster. So I'm going to move along. So what we saw here in, uh, in Ophelia was this, uh, this um, structure here. Uh, it shows that the convective cells in this mesoscale system were, were rotating. And that is uh, significant, but we're, doing, we're not looking at all the different elements that contribute to, cyclo to uh, cyclogenesis. I don't have time to go through all that. Katrina, we had a good look at a, at a principal rain band. The Eldora flew along the center of the band and uh, got very, very uh, detailed information about it. The schematically, these principal rain bands have a a jet that runs more or less along their middle section. We're uh, going to look at, and, and a lot of intermittent cells along the band. I'm going to look at some uh, sections across this. This shows the alternating up and down structures along the, uh, along the principal ring band. And uh, Anthony uh, did, like is here, did an average of the updrafts and downdrafts along the, along the uh, Band and you see three different features. A strong updraft feature associated with the reflectivity, which is in the contours. The, the, the downdrafts, there's two, one in the precipitation zone and one on the edge there. We call that the inner edge downdraft. Uh, 
And uh, since we're running short of time, I'm actually going to have to jump a little ahead here. And I think I'm just going to focus on that, that feature for now. The updraft and other updraft and downdraft st structures are rather similar to what has been seen previously. This is a, a detail of, the, of uh, the cell that shows the inner edge downdraft here, the main updraft here. The uh, inner edge uh, downdraft emanates from up here. Thermodynamic retrieval for this case suggests that the, uh, the buoyancy here, or, or this downward push here is in response to the to buoyancy here. So it's a buoyancy force pressure gradient, or pressure gradient that forces the air down. Then it gets involved apparently in the, in the precipitation there with the reflectivity and the evaporation accelerates it on down. Um, so I want to go on to Rita. So those are the highlight reels for Ophelia and Katrina. For Rita, the, the big thing we saw was the uh, concentric eyewall structure associated with an eyewall replacement. Uh, the blue here, the blue flight track is the one, the Eldora. You see the uh, NOAA planes were doing figure fours, crisscrossing the pattern, but the, uh, the, we took the Eldora along the edge uh, of the of these eyewall features, and uh, so we could get more continuous measurements all the way around of the detailed motions in, inside of the two uh, um, rain, uh, eyewalls. And from this, we got a better understanding of the moat region, the drop signs that went along with this. Uh, I got to go back for a second. We we saw that the moat was was something that really came out of this. Uh, Study we saw the the dry uh, drying uh, reduced reflectivity a downward motion here and then drop signs in here further showed that that moat region was taking on the structure of the eye so we're sort of starting to see the formation of the new eye that ultimately replaced the older eye one more thing about the uh, about the secondary eye wall which is shown here this and this is something we're still working on we haven't really sorted out yet but uh, it has a, a very complex high wave number structure in here. This is in terms of vorticity, but you see it in the other kinematic fields. This is another sector. This is in the vertical velocity field. If you count it up, you'd, if you wanted to call that wave, these wave numbers, you'd have some 30 something wave number. So a lot of alternating updraft and downdraft structure all, all the way around. And careful comparison between this updraft downdraft structure and that that we saw in the principal rain band shows that these are, are rather different phenomena. The, the, uh, the concentric secondary eye wall is not just a rain band that's become circular. It's got entirely different uh, kinematics, which we don't have time to go into here, but that seems to be what's coming out from this. So in Ophelia, we saw the deep, wide, intense rotating updraft with very little downdraft. Katrina, we saw a nice example of principal rain band, with alternating convective elements. I uh, didn't have time to talk about this, but the updraft cells systematically feed vorticity into that jet at four kilometers along the thing. And then the inner edge downdrafts actually, uh, by rather analogous processes, uh, strengthen the tangential flow in on the inward side of the band. Again, I did had to go over rather quickly, didn't get into the details. And then finally, the eyewall replacement in Rita allowed us to see the, uh, the moat in, in a great deal of detail. And also, we're now working on what the, what the story is with this alternating cell structure in the secondary eyewall. It doesn't really look very much like the, uh, the, the, the kinematic structures that you see in the, in the rain band. So I think there's a real question that about these uh, rain bands don't they're not, yeah, the, the secondary eye wall is not just a rain band, it's, it's turned into a circle. It's gone some, under some really fundamental changes and that, that's kind of be, gonna be what's up next. So that's what I have.